These are lovely, aren't they? Where do plants come from? Where do flowers come from? How do they grow? I mean, did they just kind of appear? Do they fall from the sky? Of course not. Yes, they grow up out of the ground. And in fact, a lot of things grow from the ground. And before they come up out of the ground though, how do they, I mean, how do they become plants? How do they get into the ground? Aha, well, if you said they come from seeds, you're absolutely right. See, everything from flowers to fruits and vegetables, even things like grain come from seeds that go into the ground. And the thing is that you have to plant these seeds, you have to bury them into the ground, and then of course you water them and you wait for them, and then they come up and they blossom, and they become flowers or fruits or even things like this kind of flower that we can use to make other things out of. But if the seed just stays, seeds come from fruits and flowers, and if they just stay and hang out here, they die and nothing comes of them. But if you plant them, if the seed dies and goes into the ground, it comes back up. Well, this is an interesting lesson in botany, isn't it? But why does it matter? See, because there's something else that I can think of that has had to die and be buried and came up to give new life. Well, if you answer the Sunday school answer, you're absolutely correct, that is Jesus. And in fact, in our gospel lesson today, in the gospel of John, Jesus was explaining and describing some things, and he gave this kind of an analogy. See, some people wanted to know more about him. Some people were asking the disciples, who is this Jesus guy? We wanna see Jesus. We wanna know more about Jesus. So Jesus told them about himself, about who he was, and he said something interesting. He said, you know, if a grain of wheat, see, they grew a lot of things back then, and one of those important things to grow was wheat, because that you can get bread and food and all sorts of things. So Jesus said, if a grain of wheat dies and falls into the ground, it can become a whole harvest of fruit. Okay, well, that sounds a bit odd, doesn't it? But Jesus was describing himself. Jesus knew that he was going to have to die, but he knew that by his death, he was going to be able to rescue the entire world. He knew that by his death, he was going to be able to come back to life and save all of us sinners and produce an amazing, wonderful abundance of fruit. And he knew that he would be able to bring everyone into repentance and forgiveness, but people listening to him didn't quite understand what that whole picture meant. But Jesus said something else too. He said, you know, sometimes you have to give up your life in order to get it back. Just like those seeds have to give up themselves and be buried in the ground in order to grow back. Just like Jesus had to die in order to free all of us and redeem us. So sometimes we do have to make certain sacrifices. We might have to to give something up in order to help someone we love. We might have to give up something in order to go to church or in order to be a Christian and follow Jesus. But we recognize that we get something back far greater than whatever we have to give up. That by giving up a little part of ourselves, we get Jesus, who's much better than anything we could come up with. So seeds have to go into the earth. Grain has to die but it gets new life by doing that. So yes, sometimes we might have to give something up, but if we trust in Jesus, we recognize that he gives us a much better life than anything else that we could do on our own. And we know that Jesus did die, that he went to the grave and was, well, kind of buried. I mean, it was a tomb, but he went down in order to come up, in order to be raised again to, after the resurrection, bring us into new life. So if we trust him, even when we die, we don't have to worry because we know that we have eternal life with Jesus. So 
it works for plants, and it works for us. We give up our lives in order to get them back. And Jesus gives us a new life that's even better than the old crusty grain that went into the ground. So when Jesus describes these things with these word pictures and analogies, sometimes it can be confusing for us to really understand. But we recognize the wonderful truth that we know he gave his life for us. And we have new life in him that God loves us so much he sent us Jesus. And that because of Jesus, we don't have to worry, be afraid. We can trust in him and we can hope in him. And we know that he gives us lasting wonderful life. So that's something that is worth losing a little bit of brain for. All right, why don't we say a prayer and thank God for that. And remember, next time you see seeds or plant plants, that plant goes down and it comes back up. Sometimes we feel down, but Jesus brings us back up just like God raised Jesus up. So we'll say thank you to God for that right now. Dear God, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you that we can have new life and hope in him. Help us to remember that. Help us to cling to you and to know that sometimes a little sacrifice is worth it. Thank you for your love. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that this helps a little bit to perhaps explain the gospel lesson today. There are, of course, always a number of ways that you can do so, but this is one idea. We always hope that you are able to connect with your kids and connect them to Jesus. We're here every week with new messages and craft ideas, so feel free to like, subscribe, ring that notifications bell so you can be alerted whenever we post new videos. Have a wonderful week. Go make some disciples. See you next time.